Hey there Guitar Geeks, Guitar Guts back with a simple solution to a problem that some people have reported with Paul Reed Smith stop tail pieces like the one on this Korean made SE model. This is one of the early uh, Santana SE models from the Korean manufacturing plant. It's been a great guitar. I played it for many many years and I've never had a problem with it. And just to be very clear at the first of the video, I've never experienced the problem that I'm about to show you a solution for. Uh, I've read several people say that they've had this problem on the internet, but I've owned over half a dozen of these guitars and played them for many years, and I've never seen the problem get uh, to the point uh, where it's caused any kind of buzz on the strings. Let me explain the problem to you, and then I'll explain how to fix it. The Paul Reed Smith stop tail piece is a one-piece unit. Now on a Les Paul, the tail piece uh, can be top wrapped like this, but that's not where your strings are leaving to go toward the playing area. There'll be another bridge up here in the front on a, on a Les Paul, and uh, that's where your strings will go over the saddles and head off toward the playing area. But the Paul Reed Smith stop tail piece is a one-piece unit that functions as a tail piece and the bridge. And the strings go through the front when you string the guitar, travel through the metal of the bridge, and come out the back where they wrap around the top of the bridge and grooves that are machined into the bridge. Now the bridge itself is compensated so that your intonation will be correct. There's adjustment screws in the back where you can adjust the um, length away from these uh, stud pieces to the point where your intonation is set correct and the staggered uh, cut here on the metal evens out the, the length of string that you need to keep the intonation correct. Now, because the string is going through the tailpiece and wrapping around the back, as you can imagine, when you tighten the strings down, there's constantly a pull from the bottom of this tailpiece around toward the top. Constantly a pull, leaning that tailpiece forward slightly. And you can see that. If I get the camera down here from the side, you can see that that's the flat surface of the guitar. And you can see a slight lean to that tailpiece. And you can see it if you hold to the angle of the string as well. The tailpiece has a slightly greater angle to it than either the guitar body or the string angle. Now over time that could get worse and if that bridge began leaning too far forward you could get a situation where the strings were actually leaving the metal of the bridge before they got to the end of the bridge groove. And that would cause a problem. The strings are supposed to take off from the very edge of the metal on the bridge right here to go toward the playing area. But if they weren't making good contact and they were leaving back here, then the rest of that string could buzz in the slot as it headed toward the takeoff area at the end of the bridge. And that's the problem that some people have reported experiencing with these bridges. Now there are several things contributing to that. Uh, one of which is that the bolt that's down in that guitar face um, can lean over time. Um, it's screwed down into the wood on the guitar and wood can compress over time and allow that bolt to lean forward and as that bolt leans forward the bridge would lean forward with it. The bolt is held into the body by an anchor like this. Uh, you drill a hole into the guitar body, um, stuff this anchor down into it, hammer it down in there. There's some little um, ridges on the side of it that hold it down into the wood and you kind of compress it down in there. And then in the top of that anchor there are some threads and that's where the bolt threads down into them. And then in the bolt itself um, there are grooves that the bridge rides in. If you can see right here there's a little groove and the bridge would set right in between the head of that bolt and the bottom piece on the bolt, the bridge would ride right in between there. And you can see that on the guitar right here. The bridge rides in that groove between the top of the bolt head and the other metal piece about halfway down. So the, the bolt can lean forward over time because of the compression of the wood. And if you've noticed, that bridge can also lean forward in that slot. There's a little bit of wiggle room there, a little bit of play between the top of the bolt and that bottom metal ring at the bottom. And that allows that bridge to have a little bit of wiggle to it. You can see 
about how much it can move when I use this feeler gauge. This is a 0.38 millimeter feeler gauge and I can slip it in between the bolt head and the bridge. It, and you can see that there's that much gap in between there. It's kind of tight. That's about the biggest one I can fit in. As a matter of fact, if I try to use the next size up, which is 0.4, um, it won't fit. I'd have to really cram it in there hard to get that one in there. So the amount of wiggle room that you've got there um, under string tension is about 0.38, which is not much at all. But it could mean the difference between having a guitar that plays without a buzz and one that's uh, buzzing. So if that's true and the um, bridge is leaning forward enough to cause you problems, there's a very simple fix for it. Let me bring you over here and I'll show you how to do that. Um, <clears throat> What you need is something that will fit between the head of the bolt and this bottom ledge on the bolt and fill up just a little bit of room so that the bridge fits into that groove a little bit tighter. And one thing that's real handy to do that with is uh, a flat washer. Now you can buy these at uh, electronic supply stores or even a hardware store. It needs to be really, really thin. Um, you know, not even a, a millimeter thick, really. That would be too thick, more than likely. Um, I could save you some time going out and trying to search these things out by showing you this. If you've got a tone pot or a volume pot laying around that you're not using, or one that you've taken off and don't use anymore, if you take the top screw off, there's usually a couple of washers on there. One of them is a, a lock washer that's got some little teeth on it. You don't want that one. But the other one's about the size that you need. Uh, some of these can be a little bit thicker and you'd have to find one that was thin enough. But uh, most of the ones that I've tried to use work perfectly to fit in that groove on the Paul Reed Smith guitar. I usually sand them a little bit and polish them up a little bit so that there's no rough surface on them, which there can be on some of these um, uh, washers because nobody's really concerned about the washer having uh, rough surfaces on it. But it looks bad when you install it on the guitar face. Um, so I take those washers and I will take a pair of snips and I'll simply cut from one side to the other on, on one side of the washer I'll snip through that and that way I can bend that washer to get it into the groove that's in the bolt because as you can see the top is unremovable and this bottom ledge is also unremovable so there's no way to get the washer on there unless you cut the washer. So let me show you with this model what I'm doing. It'll be easier to see this than it will the washer. But if this was the washer that I was trying to use, I'd simply snip one side of the washer, cut it, and that way I can bend the washer, and that's how I'm going to get it onto the bolt. There's no way to get it down from the top. You can't slide it down. Or you can't slide it up from the bottom either, so you have to shove it on from the side. So I cut myself a slit in the washer. I bend it turn it sideways and then it will slip onto that bolt and when I get it on I can bend the metal back into place flat and then I've got the washer there to install the bridge either over or under you can do it either way um, if you put the washer under the bridge it won't show uh, if you put the washer above the bridge you'll be able to see it from the guitar face uh, so while that's actually a little bit easier to do uh, you can see it from the top, and if you don't like the look of that, it might uh, be better to do it the other way. Now, once you get it installed, it should pull the bridge up flatter on the guitar because there'll be no wiggle room, and you shouldn't have the problem with the leaning bridge anymore. Now, the bolt still may have some lean to it, and you're not fixing that because that's a much harder fix. You'd have to re-drill and fill the hole with a dowel rod and then re-drill um, the dowel rod to fit a new anchor in and then uh, put your bolt back into that so that's a much bigger job but putting that washer above or below the bridge could get it to the right angle for you um, one thing that I'll point out at the end here there is a ledge on the bridge right here beside the bolt so if you try to use a washer that's too wide it's going to hit that ledge before you can get it on there if you're installing it above the bolt or above the bridge here 
you're going to hit that little edge. So it'll have to be a washer that's not as wide or just a hair wider than the bolt itself or it's not going to fit in there. Well, there you've got it. That's an easy fix to the problem of the leaning uh, bridge on Paul Reed Smith's stop tail pieces. If you've had any other solutions to the problem or you've got any comments, please leave them in the comment section. And be sure to hit the like button if you like the video. See you later.